This question is just asking us to set up a ratio, which means we're going to use some fractions to, to kind of set this up. But one thing that is a little weird is we have x and y and t, so there's not really a whole lot of numbers, and then the choices all have t in them. That can throw you off. So here's a good example of a question that is very easy to arithmetize and make the variable kind of go away, or at least one of them. What we want to do here is we, we see that t does not matter, right? Every choice is just multiplied by t. So I would make t equal to 1. Just picking a random number so that I can understand this ratio in a more intuitive way, and then I can hopefully just solve it in a more natural way, right? So what is the SAT doing? They know that you know how to work with ratios. They're adding this complexity by throwing an extra variable in there for no real good reason. So maybe that doesn't bother you, in which case you're probably not watching this video, but if it does, then here's a way to kind of bring it back to the normal stuff. If we make a t equal to 1, this is a random number, then we can set this up a little bit more easily, right? Now we have a ratio in the way we understand ratios. The ratio x to y is equivalent to the ratio 12 to 1. When x is 156, what is the value of y in terms of t? So we can set this up just using the first sentence. x over y is equal to, right, x to y is equivalent to 12 to 1. Now here's the benefit of, of picking uh, 1 is that that's just 12, right? So we'll leave it as a fraction for now just for symmetry. And then we can substitute in. So 156 over y is equal to 12 over 1. So what they're doing here is basically saying like, okay, what what is y equal to? Because now that we've gotten rid of t, we don't need to worry about moving things around. We've just, we've just got to get y by itself. And the best way to do that here is to cross multiply. And I don't love cross multiplying. But whenever, whenever we have fractions equivalent to each other and there's an equal sign between them, we can go diagonally basically because we multiply by both of the denominators to get rid of them. So we're multiplying both sides by y to cross out the y on the left. And because this is a 1, I actually don't really need to do anything with it. So I'll just kind of ignore it. So this becomes 156 is equal to 12y. And then we can finish it off by dividing out the 12 and we get y is equal to, I believe that's going to be 13. Let's see, 156 divided by 12 is 13, and that is our answer. Choice A. And again, notice the t didn't matter because if we substituted 1 in for t, this would be just 13 times 1, which is 13. So when we, sub, when we made t into 1, we were basically just picking a number that would make the t disappear. If we had picked a different number, we'd have to work it back into the answer choices as well at the end, but it, it, it still would give us the same answer. That's the beauty of arithmetize, is it really doesn't matter what number we pick. As long as we're consistent, it's going to um, work itself out no matter what. So I like that method. It just makes it a little simpler. Again, many of you don't need to use arithmetize here. You understand what they're asking. You can manipulate it without you know, getting rid of the t. But if you're ever feeling like there's too much algebra in a question, and you see that there's a variable that carries through, right, a, a letter that's in the question itself and then is in the answer choices, and, and at no point are they making you solve for that number or that letter, there's a good chance it doesn't matter what it is. And you can just make up a number to put in that spot, at least so you can make the, the algebra simpler or entirely go away. That's the arithmetic strategy.